Unit tests are supposed to help you find bugs. And sometimes you find you need a test double or a mock object in your test. And that's great. It can be really useful for isolating the unit under test and giving you some feedback on your design. But they're still supposed to help you find bugs. And I find that sometimes the complexity of all that test code can obscure actually what's going on and make it harder than you'd like it to be to actually tell what the bug is. So in this learning hour, we're going to use a very simple kind of test double, a stub, and write some tests that fail because of a bug. I want to help you also to get a team discussion going about test design and how to make sure that when your tests fail, they clearly show you what's wrong and how to find the bug. Hi, I'm Emily Bates. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. If you enjoy this content, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. This video is a guided learning hour. It's designed to help teams to gain skills and a common understanding of important concepts in software development. This session has supporting materials, a coding exercise and an activity board. You can get the code from my GitHub and a copy of the online whiteboard via my Patreon. Do check that out. If you haven't seen one of these guided learning hour videos before, do take a look at my video, Guided Learning Hours, How To. There's a link in the show notes. And also, I want you to watch all the way to the end of this video, because the last part is a session briefing that will help the person who's going to lead this session on my behalf. I'm about to begin the part of the video that you're going to show your team. And on the video, it's marked with the chapter, Gather Your Team. So you can start from there when you're ready. Hi, I'm Emily Bates. Welcome to this guided learning hour. Today's topic is test design and specifically test doubles and how they can help you to find bugs. We're using a shared online whiteboard that everyone should have access to. To begin with, I've got some code for you to review. This class, Safe Calculator, has a bug in it, which I've marked with a comment. And you'd like there to be a unit test that would fail because of this bug and tell you what's wrong. In order to write this test, you'll have to deal with this iAuthorizer interface. And I should just note that the real implementation that I haven't included in the exercise would be making a network call. So how would you write a test that would expose this bug? Have a little discussion and see what you can come up with. So I don't know what you've been discussing, but I imagine you've noticed that there's a problem here with the authorizer. We need to test this logic about whether it's authorized, but we can't use the real authorizer class because it's making a network call. What we need here is a test double. Now, a test double is very helpful when the unit you want to test has got some other code that it uses, a dependency, but for some reason you don't want to use the real one, like it's making a network call. So you want to replace that class with a test double. This word test double might be a little unfamiliar. It's an analogy with stunt doubles. You know, those kind of extra actors who look almost the same as the real actor and they do all the dangerous stuff. So like in a film when you're watching and you don't realize that the person you're seeing on the screen is not the famous actor, the class under test doesn't know that the object it's talking to is not the real one. And it allows the test to control what happens. So looking again at this first code snippet we looked at, we want to test the add function. And we've got a bit of a problem here with this call to authorizer.authorize. That's the thing we want to replace with a test double because using the real one is problematic. But we don't want the class we're testing to realize that we've substituted it for something else. So in the test case, we're going to call the add method just as before but we're going to set it up so that the safe calculator doesn't have a reference to the real authorizer. We're going to use dependency injection by passing the constructor an alternative implementation of this class that we control and the test knows what it's going to return. And that will allow us to test the logic in the add method. Let me show you a demo. I'm going to tackle the safe calculator carter in c -sharp. You may be using a different programming language or environment, but the principles of test design should be essentially the same. Try to focus on the way I expose the bug 
designing test cases that make it really clear why they fail. This is the starting position we looked at earlier. On the right, the safe calculator with the add method that contains the bug. And on the left, here's the test case we're going to write. I'll just start by running this test to show it, it actually does run, even though it doesn't do anything yet. I've got another test with X unit, but we're going to use the N unit one just at the moment. So let's remove the to do and write some proper code here. So we're going to need an instance of the safe calculator. And that instance needs an instance of an authorizer. So let's tell it we're going to give it a test double authorizer and then let's use our tools to bring that into being. Um, it knows what type it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be an I authorizer, but I want to create my own implementation that the test can use. And I'll just get my tools to create that type for me. Test double authorizer. And in order to be a valid implementation, it needs to implement this authorized method. And for the moment, I'm just going to have that return true because that's my first test case. It, it should not throw anything when it is authorized. So the authorizer returns true. And then I can assert that the calculator does the right calculation. So I'll need to um, think of something. Uh, so how about if I add one and two, and that should be three. Okay, so I think I should be able to run that test now. And it fails. Excellent. So hopefully that's exposing the bug. Yeah, yeah, there's the exception that we didn't want. So if we actually fix the bug now, then we should be able to see that we don't get that exception and the test passes. Right. But I'm going to put the bug back for a minute because I think I need two tests to properly expose this bug. So I'll just put that back to failing. Um, I think I need a second test where I am not going to authorize things so that I can check that it does the right thing then as well. So if I just start with this test and duplicate it um, and uh, this second test is going to be called throw when not authorized. And it'll do a different kind of assertion. So, um, oh, right. Okay. So my test double now actually needs to be configurable because for this test, I need it to return false. So I need to uh, make this true here configurable. So I'll introduce a field for that, that I can initialize from the constructor um, and it can be read only. Okay. So there's my new field, which is true. And then I need to be able to just set that from the constructor. So I'll make that a parameter. Excellent. And then it's put the true in both the constructor calls now, I think. So that first one's all right. But this second one, I want that to actually return false. Because in this test case, we're looking at the case when it's not authorized and it should throw an exception. Um, okay, so... How are we doing? Yeah, so that first test is still failing the same way as before. Great, but second test is not failing yet. Okay, we've still got to write the assertion. And for this one, I need an assert throws because I expect it to throw an exception in this case. And I need a little lambda here uh, to pass to this. So it's the same function call, adding one and two, uh, but this time the interesting result is that it should throw an exception. And of course, because of the bug, it doesn't, and the test fails. Great, so I can see that I now have two tests, both failing because of the bug, and when I fix the bug, then both the tests are passing. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I think that works. Right, now it's your turn. I'd like you to do what I did and write some tests for Safe Calculator that fail because of the bug. Several tests. And to begin with, I want you to write tests like I did with a hand-coded test double. But then I expect you've got some kind of mocking framework that you know or someone in your team knows. And I want you to write additional tests that do the same thing, find the same bug, but which use the, your mocking framework. And then with all of the tests, before you fix the bug, you should be able to look at the error message that they give you and see what the problem is just by the test failure message. That's kind of what you're aiming for. Unit tests should help you find bugs. So do your tests help you find this bug? So I hope you've had some fun writing this code and you've got lots of failing tests now. 
I wanted to tell you a little bit about the terminology here, because I imagine when you were using your mocking framework, you were probably creating a test double that it called a mock. And actually, the kind of test double that we've used here is a stub. And that's a particular kind of test double that's actually different from a mock. A stub is characterized by it has no logic. It will just return whatever the test tells it to. And in these tests, our test was saying you should be authorized or not. Just, you know, that's given by the test. They didn't get any logic in the test double. And this terminology, I think, is kind of useful because it's useful to know what that there are different kinds and that you use them in different situations. Jared Masaros created this terminology in his classic book, X-Unit Test Patterns. And it's got some people using it in the industry, but to be honest, almost everyone just says mock. And I do that too, quite a lot of the time. And the mocking frameworks all basically just call this a mock. So it can be a little confusing. But these other kinds of test doubles, the spy, the mock, the fake, and the dummy, perhaps we'll disc discuss more about what they are in a future session. But for the moment, it's useful to know that a stub is very simple, no logic, just returns something that the test tells it to. And these are very useful in a lot of situations including this one. So now I've got a couple of discussion questions for you. I'd like you to share your code with one another and show what it looks like when your tests fail. And when you can see each other's code and implementations, answer these questions. How does the test double help you to expose the bug? What role is it playing here? And then does the mocking framework version of the test make it easier to understand compared with the handwritten test double? Is it better with the test mocking framework or the test without it? Have a little discussion in your team and see what you come up with. And I don't know what the right answer is. Your mocking framework is probably different from mine, but I hope you'll come to some conclusions about what you and your team want to do. Just at the end of the session here is a chance for everyone to think about what you've learned. Write a note for your future self. When should you use a test double, a stub, and a mocking framework? Each person writes your own note in your own words. I hope you and your team have enjoyed this guided learning hour and that you've had a good discussion about test doubles. It's also useful if each person was able to write in their own words what they learned from the session about test doubles and stubs. So when you're coding in your production code today, try and remember that. Look for opportunities to write test cases that if they fail, they will point clearly at the reason for that. Happy coding. This next part of the video is the session briefing, which is intended for the developer or coach who's going to host this guided learning hour. You're doing an essential job here, guiding the team through the activities, the coding exercises and the discussions. In this particular guided learning hour, there are four points where I ask you to pause the video and lead an activity. There's a connect, concrete practice, a concept discussion, and then some conclusions. It shows here roughly how long each activity should take, because part of your job is to keep track and prompt people when it's time for the next part. The first activity is a connect, and I put some code up on the screen that people need time to read, and then they need to think about how they're going to test this. So when they've had time to read the code, ask the same question again. How, how are you going to write a test that will expose this bug? Hopefully somebody will say, you need a mock or a test double. And if they do that, please just ask them to expand a little and just a couple of sentences. What is a mock? What, did they, what is their understanding of that? Because, I mean, I'm about to explain all that in the next part of the video, but having someone in your team also explain it in their words is a bonus that helps your team to understand better, having heard it twice from different people. The next part is the hands-on exercise. And the code for Safe Calculator is available in several programming languages. So pick the one that suits you and set it up so that you've got a project you can share because 
it's good to do this exercise in small groups or pairs. In the demo, I show how to solve the problem with a hand-coded test double, but then I want you also to try doing it with a mocking framework. And you're going to need to practice that beforehand, I think, or at least look up the documentation so you know how to use your mocking framework. If you haven't got one that your organisation already uses or recommends or you, you know, um, for C Sharp, um, MOQ, MockU uh, seems to be quite a popular framework and I think it works quite well. Um, but use whatever you think your team would use in this situation. And then when you come to facilitate the exercise, you can help them if they get stuck or they need a bit of prompting for finding the documentation. The next part of the session that you're going to facilitate and lead is a discussion. And this could be a bit more challenging. I'm hoping that what you'll end up with is some code that you can put up on the screen like this so everyone can see it. On the left is the code I wrote in the demo with the hand-coded test double. And on the right is the same or equivalent tests written using a mocking framework. And you should put your code up on the screen so that everyone can uh, discuss something that they're familiar with. But the basic idea here is to talk about how easy is it to understand when the test fails. So one question to ask is how much code is there to read when the test fails? Because perhaps the code on the left here, there is actually more lines of code um, with the hand coded test double. And this is really a very simple test double. It just like has one thing that it returns. Um, whereas on the right, you've got the, the mocking framework, which is much more concise. So that's one point you want to discuss. Um, and then the other thing is, well, yeah, the, the mocking framework may be less code, but is it clear what it's doing? Can you understand this code? Because it's, it's actually a little bit more complex. The, the one on the left is kind of an ordinary class with an ordinary method, an ordinary constructor. And on the right, you've kind of got fancy stuff going on. And if you're going to use a mocking framework and the test fails, you've got to understand what it's doing for you and, and so you can find the bug. So basically, this is what I want you to be discussing with your team. Is it worth it? Should we learn the mocking framework? OK, some more tips about leading this discussion. The code that you put up on the screen, it, it has to fulfill this basic criteria that that it must find the bug and actually fail because of the bug. So so check that before you put it up on the screen. The other thing is about leading this kind of discussion is that some people in your team are naturally probably going to be more talkative than others. So, but you want this to be a team discussion that you're making each other feel better about the topic and know more. So if there are quieter people, you might need to encourage them and, and ask the louder people to kind of um, wait a little and uh, listen to others. And of course, your job is also to try and keep on topic. So uh, we're discussing test doubles and whether they're helpful for finding bugs and how you can make them even more helpful. Try and stick to that area and not get distracted by some other conflict or worrying priority that your team has at the moment. Then at the end, the conclusions is a chance for everyone just to step back a little and think for themselves. So silence and quietness is good at this point, just for a couple of minutes so people can think through what's happened. This is for them, not for you. So most people take a little while to kind of absorb a new idea and, and what they think about it. Give them that chance and just be encouraging and friendly and uh, prompt. And if people don't write anything, then they don't write anything. I mean, it's fine. Just uh, put the video back on and, and let me uh, close the session. OK, so that's the briefing. I hope you feel able to try that out with your team now. It could be a small step outside your comfort zone to facilitate a discussion and lead a coding exercise, but it could be just the challenge you need personally and exactly what your team needs to start improving the quality of your code and tests. Give it a go.